where are the greatest pressure points in the Phillips family? Where is the greatest point of pain here? I, hi, Manis. Well, let me first point out that the first quarter actually came in in line with what we said in January, uh, even slightly better. Um, the revenue lower than last year relates to um, the, 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 the stoppage of the respiratory and sleep business, which we still had sales last year, and but not this year, as we are focused on the recall. Um, and then the EBITDA comes with that. So we are actually in line with industry analysts and consensus. Um, now, if I take the picture a little bit wider, then I am actually pleased with ongoing strong customer demand. We saw 5.1% order growth in the quarter, uh, and products ranging from MRI scanners that don't consume helium to image-guided therapy, healthcare informatics, uh, personal health, oral care, all are, are actually tracking very well. Um, of course, we are challenged by supply chain shortages. Uh, we have worked very hard to overcome that in the first quarter. I think we did a reasonably good job, and that is why revenue came in a little bit ahead of what we said in January. So, challenging times. Are you times, seeing perhaps, any light? Challenging times, challenging times, and the last time you, you coined the phrase for every other CEO that you had problems with chips and ships. Are they still at maximum tension, chips and ships, or is there any reprieve there at all, Franz? This is still number one on, on the list. Um, as I mentioned, we have been working very hard to overcome supply chain challenges in Q1. It wasn't easy. It was an everyday uh, uh, challenge and battle. I, I expect this to continue in this, the second quarter, the third quarter, even the fourth quarter. Visibility is low. I am pleased that the U.S. government and the European Commission both have said that semiconductor makers should prioritize healthcare uh, because this is about humanitarian needs. Um, I hope the semiconductor suppliers will heed that advice because it's really important. Um, and if we can get the supplies in, uh, actually, we are able to to plan a very good growth this year. Franz, uh, news on Friday evening. You're investigating the potential death uh, of, of, of someone in regards to potentially using V60, V60 plus and V680. Now, these are our apparatus. How soon will you know whether this death was caused by uh, these machines? Uh, this concerns a, a hospital ventilator. It's an issue that we already flagged in January, that this would, was one of the, the quality uh, issues that we are dealing with. There are, uh, um, in rare circumstances, uh, situations mm -hmm. where um, patient harm can occur. This is, of course, something we take very much to heart, and we are invest investigating that. Uh, we are, in the meantime, uh, providing a solution for the alarming situation, uh, and uh, we anticipate to provide a, a permanent fix to the hospitals uh, in due course. You have 105,000 of these devices, as I understand it. It should be said that, you know, six silent shutdowns, four patient harms, and one potential death to contextualize 105,000 versus the state of play. In the worst case scenario, the very worst case scenario, if you had to take those 105,000 devices off the market or recall them, what would your exposure be? That is not going to happen because this is, this is actually a very popular device and with the, um, okay. uh, with the recall notice, there's a perfectly safe uh, contingency to be put in place uh, so that this alarm, um, the miss of such an alarm uh, would not happen. Uh, and we are working on a permanent fix. Uh, so I don't think Franz, anybody needs to worry that we need to take those machines back. You and I have talked about the sleep apnea machine. We're now, you and I are talking about the V60, the V60 Plus. At the very heart, as a CEO, we need to ask you, are there fundamental problems in uh, checking, processes, production, safety? Do you have... Are you concerned that you have some deep-seated issues around processes and robust processes within Philips? 
I can completely understand the question, Manus. And uh, we asked ourselves the same question um, in looking back. And we believe we have actually made a tremendous progress uh, over the last 10 years on the topic uh, of putting patient safety first and assuring quality. Um, over those 10 years, we certainly have found issues and we have dealt with them forthrightly. Um, on the back of the sleep recall, um, we have again started the whole investigation. Did we miss any signals? Um, is there anything else out there? Um, I spoke about that to the analyst in January. Uh, in the meantime, we have uh, completed most of that uh, re revisiting of, of patient signals and we feel actually good that there are no other issues uh, materializing. Uh, we are dealing with these uh, issues from the respiratory uh, business uh, as quickly as we can, because it really is something that goes deeply to our values and to our heart. Okay, well, we, we await to, to hear the results of those investigations uh, and the subsequent changes that you may make. Uh, the price rises that I'm feeling when I go to the shop, I feel it uh, when, when, when I book an airline ticket, and when it comes to health, price rises are there too. How permanent and what scale of price rises are you putting through across the business? Where are the biggest price hikes and are they now becoming a more permanent feature in your view, Franz? Yeah, we, we definitely see higher inflation than uh, last year. Um, it's, it's getting towards the 2.5% at the moment. Um, we are uh, putting in price rises, uh, which of course have a faster effect in our consumer health business versus uh, uh, the healthcare and hospital business where you, you work with longer lead times uh, and, a, and, a, and an order book that already came in largely last year. Uh, I think it's important to realize that inflation may stay with the, the global market for the next few years and that uh, we will see further price rises as we go. In the meantime, we are also taking uh, cost measures because uh, for some of those uh, effects, we can also do some uh, belt tightening and be frugal on cost. Uh, and in that way, we can mitigate uh, the impact for Philips. Uh, and we are working hard to realize uh, our forecast as we laid it out in January. Franz, just before I let you go, to get, those, to get those costs a little bit more under control, do you expect to close any businesses, exit any businesses, or make any job losses? Um, we are not uh, planning to close any businesses. We are working hard and stay focused on, on the businesses that actually drive a lot of demand. Uh, in the beginning of the call, uh, I already mentioned how <clears throat> strong demand we are seeing for health informatics, for image-guided therapy, for our oral care. So Philips has a lot of traction in the market. Um, as we overcome supply chain challenges, uh, I look with confidence to the future that we can uh, deliver uh, a, a result in line with the guidance that we gave in, in January.